Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Milbury. The Fosrock Super Series Championship is coming to the boil. And with only three rounds of fixtures remaining, every match and every point is crucial. Tonight, we're in the backyard of one of the competition's long-held heavyweights as the Ayrshire Bulls play host to the Boromir Bears. Storm Babbitt has battered much of Scotland this weekend. And although it is a blustery old evening, as you can see from the blistering trees and alloy behind us, the rain mercifully has stayed away and we hope for a spectacle of attacking rugby tonight, brought to you by these men here. Well, Pat MacArthur shakes things up a little in this Bulls team. Five changes to the 15 that lost to Heriots in an 80-point thriller last time out. Up front, Scotland Club International and stalwart Calvin Henderson returns at tight head prop as part of a hugely physical and abrasive tight five, which also features former Glasgow Warriors prospect Rory Jackson. Ryan Sweeney is a ferocious competitor on the blindside flank, he comes in with Ewan Hamilton Bulger alongside Tim Brown and captain and try machine Blair McPherson at number eight. There's an opportunity for Fergus Johnston to partner the prolific point scorer Brad Roderick Evans in the halfbacks. Johnston scored a double the last time the Bulls and the Bears locked horns. Ollie Horn returned to Scotland from the Manly Marlins of Australia this year. He selected an inside centre alongside the 100 kilogram frame of Chris Elliott. Former Wraith Rovers youth footballer Thomas Glenn Dinning comes into the Bulls' back three on the left wing. It's a hugely dangerous trio, this, which also features the hulking Jamie Shedden and the fleet-footed Luca Bardelli. And it could be a family affair for the Cullen boys tonight, too. Elder brother Reese is on the Bulls' bench and could face his younger sibling Mason, who starts in the Bears' back line. By contrast, very little in the way of movement in this Boromir Bears team. Only two changes in personnel after what was a very frustrating 29-15 loss to the Southern Knights last time out. The first of those new faces come in an otherwise altered pack. Kieran Westlake returning to the team on the open side flank with Scott McGinley dropping to the bench. A big job for those Bears forwards tonight against so sturdy a home pack. Big Martin McGinley at tight head and rising Scotland age grade star Cody Tate could be key men. The other bear switch is made at fly half and what a momentous day this is for Andrew McLean, the teenage Scotland under 20 pivot who makes his first start in this competition. He's got a sharp rugby brain for company in seven specialist Karim Barreto and an age grade teammate outside him in the highly rated Duncan Munn. Ewan Muirhead is the Bears top try scorer of the season with seven. He starts at full back and already the Bears are out on the pitch warming up the shoulders Going through those final preparations, they know their playoff hopes are dashed. They know that they can no longer reach the top four, but they know too that every game at this level is an opportunity to impress, a chance to stake your claim to more minutes, to bigger and brighter things in the professional game. There is the free scoring Ewan Muirhead. Scored his seventh try of the campaign against the Knights at the Green Yards. And Kalim Barreto on the right hand side with the knee patch. The GB7's operator restored to the 15 man game as he prepares to bid for Olympic qualification. Seven series this season. The Bulls enter the arena. Clad in beautiful bright pink. Knocked off top spots in the table by Heriots in a Golden Acre belter last weekend. And they will be eager to ensure there are no further slip ups, no more mistakes with a home semi final at stake for them. How they long to secure their place in the top two and book their spot with a Milbury meeting in the last four. Our referee tonight is David Sutherland, former David Dundee University fly half. Just tell us when, Craig. And it will be the Bears well. to get this game underway as Kalim Barreto prepares to kick us off. One of the most experienced professionals on the pitch tonight here we go Friday night lights at Milbray and immediately the Bears are offsides 
Mason Cullen scurrying well up ahead of Colleen Barreto. An inauspicious start for the Bears. And a chance to welcome Heather Lockhart, former Scotland international, to the free. When you've been struggling for results as the Bears have this season, you come to the backyard of one of the competition's big dogs, that's not the start you want. Yeah, I think that was just a bit eager just to, to get the game started. They're hitting the bags there, and even though they can't get top four, that just shows how eager they are to, to get something out of tonight. First scrum of the evening. Hasn't taken long. Perhaps the players were cold. This is an area where the Bulls have been so dominant for so many seasons. And they turn the screw again. Lads, for me, it was just round on the mark. We reset. Yeah, bring it over. Yeah. Okay. How important, Heather, are these early scrums as a front row when you're trying to set the pace, okay. paint the right pictures to the referee, prove that you're the dominant scrum? Yeah, I think both, both props there, just to, on the near side here, just were sort of heads were down, so they just need to be a bit more strong and stable and square. Crouch! Bind! Set. Stronger scrum from the Bears. They are commanded to use it. McPherson away to Johnston. And he gets this backline purring down the right touchline. Elliott introducing Bardelli with the carry. One of the men who's been in training with pro teams this season. Had a bit of game time with Glasgow Warriors in their summer friendly matches. As they gear up for the turn to the United Rugby Championship on Sunday. Or pulling it out the back. And Roderick Evans is grubber as well, fielded by Kerry. And Mason Cullen gets paws on it for the Bears. Moreto pulled back by Westlake. McLean for Muirhead. Bulls defence up quickly. It's an area they've been keen to address after shipping over 40 points against Heriot's last weekend. Bears keeping possession alive, flirting with that touchline, and the Bears are bundled over the white paint. And that's a big early defensive set from the hosts. But the Bears proving they're here to give the ball some air despite the conditions. You always have a chance to match numbers, okay? Seven, you're good there, thank you. Seven, thank you. Ollie Horn, born in Livingston. He'd spent the past few years of his career with the Manly Marlins in the famous Shoot Shield competition in yes! Sydney, Australia. Now back in slightly less sunny climes at Mill Bray. Bulls with the first. I thought you fancy will be a few of these driving malls tonight. The Bears come in from an offside position. Free play for the Ayrshire Bulls. Jamie Shedden flicks it on to Bardelli. He's got the dancing shoes on, but Cullen stands firm. And the Bears do a fine job of pilfering that back, so David Sutherland brings them across for the opening penalty of the evening. Some lovely play there by the Bulls, Bardelli. Playing at fullback rather than his usual wings, but interesting to see what he does tonight. It's not a night for kicking for the posts, largely because the posts are swaying furiously in the breeze with every gust of this passing storm. So the Bulls go to the corner, Heather. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Uh, Roderick Evans there was practicing uh, in practice and uh, they were going over, but yeah, good option just now. Bears, here you are. Weightless on the ground, nothing in the air. Goal line green. Alex Maguire. Prepares to arrow this one to the tail. Cleanly taken by Rory Jackson. And look at the shunt coming on from the Bulls here. David Sutherland having a close look at them all. Trundle to ground once. Now they go again. Now they peel off. And now the Ayrshire Bulls score. A classic Ayrshire Bulls try. All about the power. 
the weight and the body positions. And Alex Maguire cracks the deadlock in Alloway. Yeah, it's a well executed line out here. Bloodworth taking it well, and the drive and the secondary drive is outstanding. Maguire already four tries from 10 matches, being patient at the back and getting, a, getting his just rewards. How do you stop a drive like that, Heather? It seems fiendishly tough when the, the momentum's against you. Yeah, well, exactly. You just save momentum. I think the earlier you can stop it, the better. Brad Roderick Evans, second in the point scoring table in the Super Six Super Series Championship, I beg your pardon. Marcus Holden leading the way. Roderick Evans unable to tame the storm. But six minutes played, the Ayrshire Bulls lead the Bermuda Bears by five points to nil. Pat MacArthur swaddled in his pink hoodie on the left of your picture next to Bobby Ferguson and Fraser Klimo, the Bulls coaching staff. It was interesting reading Pat MacArthur's quotes this week. He was very, very unhappy with what was a, a classic Super Series encounter at Golden Acre. 49-36 it finished, but the Ayrshire Bulls pride themselves on defence and being tough to beat and leaking seven tries, not part of the plan. First possession opportunity this for the Bears. Inside the Bulls half. Right, lad, second one really good. Okay. Now know that's the standard I expect. As we talked about, get that stability on a lower contest, okay? Same voice, really good. Stability on a lower contest. Yeah, top of your side. Crouch! Bind! <laughs> Big scrum penalty, that's. <laughs> Finley Brown, the assistant referee. Finding fault with the Bulls scrum. And that's a big win for the Bears, Heather. Yeah, absolutely. Gives them real opportunity. 22 here, 22. Yeah, just on the 22, so a fantastic opportunity there. Yeah, Andrew Neville, just at loose side, just uh, going to deck too early and adjusts to um, penalty for the Bulls. Bears. It's a night when the packs really do have to front up. Bitterly cold, very, very windy. So much will depend on the graft of the piano shifters. The Bears, meanwhile, shifting the piano in the right direction. Corey Tate's in command of this at the back. Has to release it to Barreto. And now the Bears through Robeson, the co-captain, into the 22. Barreto again through the hands of Keddy. And it's been pinched back by the Bulls. Good snaffling work on the deck by the home side. Johnston thought about kicking, then realised there were a lot of pink jerseys off to the left. Maguire, Johnston picks it up, Jackson fires it wide, and Roderick Evans hasn't got a lot of room to work with. He has got two large bears in the form of Martin McGinley and Corey Tate, and the bears have stolen it back on the ground too. Possession changing hands, McFeet Smith. Played a bit of pro rugby in Hong Kong. Mon. Robeson, drift on that pass. Bounces tantalisingly in front of McLean, and now Joe Jenkins, who's well shackled, a flying left winger, and the system referee has his flag in the air. Sam O'Neill, Joe Jenkins, just caught before he could release that ball. Good head-to-head -head that between him and Shedden. Joe Jenkins, former Wales Sevens international, but Jamie Shedden has been one of the standout players since the inception of the Fulls Rock. Super Six as it was, Super Series as it is now. Enormous winger.
pace to burn and soft skills to Goals defence still unbleached. Johnston goes to the skies. Taken by Muirhead. And McLean ransacked. Couldn't do much with that. Writhing around on the deck. The goals come piling in. McPherson couldn't quite get there. The Bears through Martin McGinley probe the short side. And win the penalty too. Two, two quicker. Yeah, Alex Maguire getting uh, penalised there, but some superb tackling by Ollie Horn by the Bulls earlier there. Uh, Jamie Sheridan was legal coming over the top to steal the ball, but referee's saying he couldn't give that penalty to Bulls because Alex Maguire had his hefty frame in the way the Bulls have steadied the ship well in defence but the Bears since conceding have had a lot of possession this last five minutes yet to make anything of it the line out falls kindly at the tail of Martin McGinley took that one in the bread basket and now Corey Tate a rising star of the National under 20 system. He'll play some pro rugby this season, you imagine. Westlake, a big Cornishman, up to the 22. Not big enough to run over the top of the Bulls forwards. Robeson. Barreto again keeps that tempo high. Introducing big Tristan Andrews. He too is upended. McLean gets the shout from Jenkins on the inside, but again. The Bulls up quickly. The Bulls smashing that breakdown. Crying for the penalty. They'll settle for the ball instead if they can get it. Tim Brown all over it. And it will be a Bulls scrum. It's Alex Maguire in there again. Really does make such a nuisance of himself in those positions. Yeah, Barmier Bears this beautiful play and attack there but um, uh, the, the Ayrshire Bulls will very much practice their, their defence this week disappointed with the result last week and look yeah. at that leg drive and commitment to the breakdown as well great work in defence, Robbie Ferguson sitting up in the stands there will be proud of that, we were talking to him earlier and they worked hard on that this week I don't know if you spotted this Heather but there was a little tousling of Colleen Barreto's hair by one of the big Bulls forwards as they gleefully piled on top of the scrum half Graham Shield with plenty to ponder. Crouch. The back of the stand. Peering down his spectacles at his notepad. Fine former Scotland player. The 1990s and early 2000s. Attack is very much the Bears' DNA, but they're coming up against the best defence in the Championship. And right now it's showing. Horn drills it long. Cullen. What a pink jerseys in his field of vision. Can he plot a route through them? Well, actually, he's dragged down, but he gets the pass away neatly, and the Bears off kick receipt. Looking to Maraud. Barreto back for McLean. Westlake to Andrews. And then McFeet Smith rumbles up towards halfway. Barreto. Referee runs a dummy line. Colleen Barreto takes full advantage. Muirhead now. Kick half charged from Jenkins. Rescued by Duncan Munn. Scotland under 20 captain this summer. Fisher. That's got the Bears moving in the right direction. McLean. Tate. They play out the back and Roderick Evans can't quite get there. If he had, he was in for seven points. Yeah, great pass to play there by the Bears. 
real attacking intent, but as we're saying, it's very much Bears attack against the Bulls defence at the moment. They're really being ruthless in that defence and uh, Bears are going to have to use their imagination to, to get round them or through them. Scrum's been a compelling old battle thus far. 1-0 to the Bears by penalty counts. Solid again as Andrews to Barreto, the change of direction and McLean on the wraparound, introducing Muirhead. Jenkins juggling on the far touchline. Near touchline as we look at it. Barreto over the shoulder, that's a smart kick. A lot of space up there because Jamie Shedden was up in the line, but the bounce of the ball will take it just over the goal line. But still, in a night like this, with weather like this, a goal line dropout's not a bad outcome for Boromir. Yeah, I like how Barreto changed direction from the base of the scrum there and then went for the kick option just to, to, just to change the picture, vary things up. Good options. Roderick Evans sends it down to halfway. McLean for Ewan Muirhead. He's the danger man in this back three. Robeson's got power, he's got skills as well. What an offload. Cullen grubbering it through. Keddie's on the chase. It's well covered in the end by Shedden, who come way off his wing to mop things up for the Ayrshire Bulls. Calvin Henderson squeezing a couple of metres to make life easier for his halfbacks. Charge him, charge him is the cry from the Boromir Bears. Johnston over the shoulder. And that is a flopper of a kick. <laughs> 40 metres plus from Fergus Johnston. Breeze or no breeze, that's a fine relieving kick. Tatum with Edinburgh Rugby at the moment, hoping to make his professional mark in the URC season, which kicks off tomorrow. Loretto, McLean drills it straight into Bardelli's chest, and Bardelli has pace to burn, and he could make the Boromir Bears pair here. Look at the speed of Bardelli away from Cullen, and just rescued, just rescued by Andrew McLean, who atoned for the wayward kick and got back in the nick of time. But it will be a, an Ayrshire Bulls scrum five metres out. And that's the danger, Heather, that Luca Bardelli possesses. Absolutely. Scoring tries this season. Invited, uh, played in the pre-season friendlies with Glasgow. And look at that pace, but well done there. McLean just getting back. Super cover. Uh, I just didn't feel you had a lift. Okay, so even if you get on ball, for me... Tristan Andrews just planting a little seed in the mind of referee David Sutherland. Just asking why he wasn't rewarded for a bit of work over the ball, a bit of jackling at close quarters. Over by and Robbie Ferguson, as we mentioned, in the middle of the picture with the water bottle in front of him, as captain GB Sevens led Scotland Sevens with such distinction over the years. Good number of games for the Glasgow Warriors as well, and yeah, now with a, a key yeah, leadership off, role, please. not just with Ayrshire Bulls, but with the whole of your know, rugby club, a coaching and management yeah, role. Then heading up the new women's program here passing on his expertise to the next generation. You'll be happy with the way the Bulls have withstood this Boromir Bears attacking set. And now they have the chance to land a punch of their own. Set. 
little session. Okay. The last bears, you guys hold your weight, please. If you've got an issue, stand up earlier. Yeah, Otherwise, right. take, this, take the space yes. that they give. Okay. Reset air ball. Okay. You give them the space, and we choose these stays down. Crouch. Bind. Set. The Bulls look to crank up the pressure gauge. Order to play, McPherson going it alone, McPherson steaming towards the line, and he's held up. You would have put your house on the Ayrshire Bulls skipper, turning that into five points. But it's a brilliant piece of last-ditch defence from the Bears, and from Tristan Andrews and Joe Jenkins. Yeah, absolutely outstanding defence there, on their right on their line. Blair McPherson is a force to be reckoned with on that line, so great stop. Nine tries for the season already, Blair McPherson. Second in the try scoring charts. And you would have backed him to make it into double figures there. Big steal for the Bears. Andrews gets it this time. Two telling interventions from the Bears number eight. Colleen Barreto, so vocal the scrum half, ordering the big boys around, making sure everyone's exactly where they need to be to give him the best chance of maximum distance. Didn't go to touch. Bardelli drops it onto the toe. It's an awkward, vicious spinning one. Muirhead gets on the end of it. That's a slicey one. And it bounces in the field of play, though. Ollie Horn was watching very closely. Muirhead shakes his head, but it's not a bad yardage gain. Take a line, please, Bears. Yeah, it's an interesting matchup with these two absolute rising stars. Ones to watch very much for the future and now. Take it halfway, it's good, thank you. Maguire goes to Ryan Sweeney, the blindside flanker. He's been in and out of the team with a troublesome shoulder in recent weeks, but he's a big, big player for the Bears in every sense of the word. There's all sorts of wrestling going on in the heart of that mall. Fisher gets right through on it, but Johnston straight up, straight back down again. None of the Bulls can touch this, but Bloodworth is onside. Oh, no, he's not. No, he's not. Got to get out that 10 metre zone, that radius around the kicker. Ed Bloodworth loitering with intent. And his lovely right foot punt will count for naught. Yeah, a real tussle going on here. Graeme Shields talking about creating opportunities and taking them. And uh, Beer certainly had some opportunities, so they'll want to take this. Oh, and they do, they do just. The rub of the green for Boromir Bears. Didn't make touch on the fool, but a little hesitation. Johnston left it. And it looked over him into touch. Now the Bears deep inside Bulls territory. Again, it's a a dusty line out, it's a squint throw, and it's a squandered opportunity. Choice, not straight. Scrum. Not straight. <laughs> We're saying blame the jumpers, that's just a timing thing, and also that you can't underestimate it, just gusty wind. It does play its part. Up 
Vladimir Beer is averaging around three tries per match scored in the First Rock Super Series Championship this season. 30 they've plundered over their nine matches so far. Yet to break down the stout Ayrshire Bulls door. And it's the Bulls going forward and McPherson, look at him, careering off the base. It's like a rhinoceros on the stampede. Outside. It's carried back. It's carried back. Bulls can't kick this directly to touch. Angus Johnson toys with the ball. Much lower trajectory. It's off a bear's hand. All the Bulls on side as Muirhead hits Joe Jenkins. The space opens up for him, but it's quickly closed in the end by Thomas Glenn Dinning. Barreto. Westlake it's the inside pass away neatly to Jack Fisher. The former Preston Lodge player in the capital city. Tate. Robeson, a cute little kick over the top. Bounces only for Luca Bardelli. And Dinning was in there helping out as well. Oh, here we go. Jamie Sheddon's on the rampage. So is Ed Bloodworth. Andrews with a great tackle, but Jackson off the deck. Ransacked by Fisher. Bottomir Bears crying for a knock on. It's not going to be given. Glenn Dinning spears into the 22. Bloodworth out the back. Roderick Evans to Horn to Elliott. What a brilliant looping pass that is. And here's a chance for Sweeney on the wide outside. Feeds it into Shedden. Shedden with a dive. Did he ground that ball? He didn't. It's ruled as a knock on. And the Bears again. Save themselves at the last. Yeah, tough there for Bulls. Absolutely superb play, but excellent defense, cover defense there by, by it's Bears. Andrews again. again. Yeah. That's two for Tristan Andrews. Two men down. He saved it seemed his team ten, possibly twelve, possibly even fourteen points. The last ditch tackle on McPherson and that robbery on Big Jamie Shedden, who is such a weapon. There's an outstanding initial break. This pass here, Heather, from Elliot takes out two defenders, gives Sweeney a run, and the offloading too in these conditions is brilliant. Yeah, real trust, and he was just, yeah, he was just wading through and just, yeah, cover defence, excellent. But yeah, Chris Elliott, underrated, I think. Lovely pass out wide. So goal line dropouts for the Bears. Barreto into the breeze it goes. Sets up invitingly for Thomas Glenn Dinning. Pfeiffer from Kirkcaldy. The meat in a big Buttermere sandwich. Henderson. Johnston. Roderick Evans standing deeper this time. Ed Bloodworth leaving it for Sweeney. And again, Ryan Sweeney makes a punishing, unrelenting charge into the Bears 22. Roderick Evans on the inside for Horn, but he is met in a huge Callum McFeet Smith cruncher. Elliot now playing out the back. The Bulls finding their attacking shape. Elliot decked, lifted up, tossed back down again. The Bulls using that forward power. The grunt that has served them so well that led them to the title in 2021, to the final in 2022, to the sprint series in 2023. Go down the short side with Roderick Evans and with Jamie Shedden, but he's lost it again. 
And the Bears can hoof it clear. Well, this is tantalising ball for Luca Bardelli and the speed and the footwork again. Maguire on his shoulder. Glenn Dinnings with him. No scrum half there for the Bulls. Bardelli got back to his feet to make sure that ball came back on his team's side. Bloodworth. Johnston for McPherson. Tristan Andrews again, he's seeking out Blair McPherson. He's putting big shots on the Bulls' captain, but the Bulls continuing to land some shots here. No, do not play the night. Advantage. Penalty advantage now to the Bulls. The Bears pushing their luck a little too much at the breakdown. Johnston, Andrew Nimmo with Calvin Henderson riding side saddle. Johnston once more, finding Sweeney once more. Johnston sniping, offloading, McPherson hits the post and loses the ball forwards. Three times the Bulls have been over the Bears line and three times they've been unable to press that ball onto the turf. It's a clear knock on, you don't get that. Yeah, correct decision. It's a good spot from David Sutherland, the referee, as well. It is a clear knock on, but it's a clear knock on with HD cameras. Just yeah. slipped from McPherson's grasp. Yeah, good referee. The Bulls turned down a, a relatively straightforward shot at three to go for five or seven. See the frustration writ large on Blair McPherson's face. Hasn't missed a match, absolutely leads by example every single time. He looks even scarier with that haircut. Watch this move. This is where the Bulls scored the only try of the game 25 minutes earlier. Can they double up? Can Alex Maguire double up? It's very ominous for the Bears. It's another Ayrshire Bulls try. And it's a double for Alex Maguire. At last, the bottom of your dam bursts and a great pink tide goes flooding through it. Pat McArthur will be very pleased with this mall. Well executed, patience. Second rumble. And Maguire's body position is a strong hooker. But the, have must say the Bears' defence tonight. They can be justly proud. Really good. Corey Tate trying desperately to get hands on the ball and hold up his opposite man. Couldn't do so. And the man who helped Ayr to a, a League and Cup double in club rugby in 2019. That's his second of the evening. <laughs> Roderick Evans splits the uprights. Here's your Bulls 12, but Amir Bears nil. Kevin's now up to 64 points. Still some way behind Marcus Holden, who leads the point-scoring charts in the championship. Barreto's kick holds up in the wind, and it's out off Ed Bloodworth's fingertips. Five, we know. Five, we know. Shields team looking for just their third win of the season. Their tenth match. One more to go against the Sterling Wolves at Bridge Hoch. The Bulls finish their campaign at home against the future 15 next weekend. Barreto under pressure finds Tristan Andrews. The Bulls want them all here. They've got them all. 
and they've got the pill too. Johnston, there's space back there. Cullen making up the ground quickly. He slips, Glendinning misses him. Cullen bamboozling McPherson. Andrew Nimmo with an important tackle, the big prop. Barreto, McLean. Ruhead pulling it back for Scott Robeson, who's definitely the most physically imposing member of this Bears backline. Munn took it on a bit further. McLean dummying, saw a little space, found Westlake on his shoulder. He hits Barreto, and suddenly it's opening up for the Bears. Barreto swings it wide, and it's lost on the deck by Duncan Munn. <laughs> Bears will be frustrated with that. Some excellent build up player play there. Um, McLean, a mere head at 15 coming into the line really well, really zipping the, those passes. It's interesting, um, Bardelli has had his opportunity when they've kicked to him. I think the Bears need to find if they're kicking away from Bardelli. I think that's the one of the key areas. Gives the the, um, the Ayrshire Bulls another chance. Bardelli, class act. Yeah, knock on by Muir, air ball. Time on. Air scrum. Here's your Bulls looking for their fourth win in a row of the Boromir Bears. The last loss to the men from Megatland in April 2022 and last year's sprint. 29 points to 21 defeats in the capital. The last time out, they won by 41 points, 48-7 the final score. With Fergus Johnson bagging a double, Bobby Beatty as well. Two tries that day, he's nursing a quad strain. He was telling us before the match that Dangerous former Warriors centre. Hopes to be back for the semi-final. Assuming Bulls rubber stamp their place there. They're on their way to doing that just now as Horn scrambles up to the 22. Johnston. Huge distance on that kick. And the Bears must come again from halfway as we tick towards the last five minutes of this first half. Corey Tate crooked with his last throw. It's an important one to get right, and he does. Westlake put it off the top. McLean, Duncan Munn holding it up in midfield. Bodies falling everywhere at that ruck. David Sutherland having a close look at it. The upshot is turnover Ayrshire Bulls. And Johnston looking to punish the Bears. Break down profligacy. Muirhead covering. And this one is allowed to bounce. Shedden drops the two onto it. One back by Callum McFeet Smith, the big 120 kilo loose head. Barreto. Fisher. He really does take some stopping, Jack Fisher. A very consistent performer for the Bears. Bulls offside, free play for the Bears. Robeson running back into the heavies. Good to be being held by the neck by Oli Horn. Fisher. Barreto. McLean, there's that injection of pace. Man, what handling this is from the Bears. Westlake twinkling down the touchline. Now finds the inside pass, a double touch for Munn, out the back door to Tate. They're streaming through into the 22. Kenny with Cullen with them. Cullen on the switch, stepping back on the inside. That would have been a classic. They still might finish it. Corey Tate gets all so close. Martin McGinley within five metres of the line. 
Barreto back Go and then forward. they drop it on the floor. Scrum advantage pink. They lose it forwards. Seven's moved, he's fine. And might that be their last chance Go of the half? Advantage. Use nine. Scintillating build up play from the Bears. The kick is half charged, then David Sutherland will bring them back. For the Bulls scrummage. Right, just get the ball in the face. Time off. Doesn't get much better than this, Heather. Oh, we're talking about how exciting the backs are, and look at that interplay with the, the forwards there. Westlake gets involved. Lovely offload to Tate. Tate just. Keddy there. Mason Cullen. Really, really good interlinking play. Numbers there. Yeah. There's urgency, there's numbers at the breakdown. Yeah, okay, thanks, Sam. Yeah. And they've just got to look after that ball. That's what we're talking about, just finishing the opportunities that they're creating. There was one out in the left there, Barreto, and there was a knock-on as well. So, Barreto, so, yeah, just tidying those up and maybe just tidying the line out. Just It's a bit inconsistent at the moment, so they've just tidied that up. I think they'll, they'll get over that line. William Facker rolling up his sleeves, literally and metaphorically, is on in the front row for Andrew Nimmo, who's been withdrawn with a shake of the heads, perhaps nursing a, a minor injury. Graham Shiel is making his way in instalments towards the tunnel. There's Andrew Nemo. Doesn't look like he'll be playing any further part in this match. A confirmation of that change. The former Kilmarnock and Mar Centurion Fakhar on in Jersey 17. The Bears are really making the Bulls work there. Excellent play. Two Poor old Jack Fisher appears to have lost the contact lens. He was struck in the face by Fergus Johnston's box kick from a distance of approximately 0.2 inches. And he's now going to be playing with one eye. Till half time at least. Crouch! Bind! I should one each standing up, okay? Stay down, let them take the space. You stay down, take the space. Okay? Yeah? Same feet. Just settling things down, new prof on. Is there a bit of kidology goes on here? Heather, everyone trying to to plead their case to the referee? I think it's just, when there is a new prop on it, it's like, it's like a tennis game as well. There's, it's a new Bind. opponent, so things take a wee bit just to settle down. Set! William Fucker certainly settling down nicely in the loose head side. And the Ursha Bulls have the penalty. That's the impact you want from your subs. Bears off under pressure. Really strong, square, just driving right through. Excellent play. Brad Roderick Evans taking no chances. I think that might have landed on your car windscreen outside, Heather. That's cleared the stand into the car park behind us. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. Brilliant throw to the tail from Alex McGuire, whose two tries separate the teams. Penalty advantage to the Bulls as well because Martin McGinley dragged that mall down illegally. Roderick Evans at the back for Horn and David Sutherland. 
will pierce the air with a shrill blast. And that's what sporting folk call coach killers. Back-to-back -back penalties, the first one at the scrum, perhaps unavoidable, couldn't handle the pressure. This one, though, a little more cynical. There's Martin McGinley, 130 kilograms in a bright green jersey. They're not exactly inconspicuous. And that allows the Bulls to either knock this out and end the half, which is what they're going to do, or for a downfield. The tap and the kick from Brad Roderick Evans. And that brings this first half of Friday night's Foss Rock Super Series Championship action to a close. It's not been high scoring, but don't believe it hasn't been entertaining. End to end fair at times, a lot of attacking endeavour, but at the end, when the final tally is totaled, those two Alex Maguire tries and the solitary Brad Roderick Evans conversion separate the teams at the break. Half time in Alloway, Ayrshire Bulls 12. Bottom your bears, nil.
half time at Millbrae and it's the Ayrshire Bulls in command on home soil they lead Boromir Bears by 12 points to nil and we can take a look back now at some of the best of the first half action didn't take long for the Ayrshire Bulls to open the scoring Alex Maguire with the first of his first half doubles both of them coming from Driven Malls and Heather Lockhart this is what we've come to expect from the Millbrae troops yeah it's absolutely excellent take there and just recycling Alex Maguire, four tries now adding to his tally. Fifth try here. Joining the end there and just driving right through in the secondary drive. Low body position. It's good defence there by the Bears. But just too powerful. He's such a powerful hooker. Excellent play. Yeah, I felt like that might set the tone for this one, but Paramir Bears came back. They had a lot of attacking phases and defensively they were very, very solid as well. A couple of last ditch tackles holding up the Ayrshire Bulls. Luca Bardelli seizing upon this McLean kick and it's McLean who gets back to ground over his own line, which set up the opportunity for the five metre scrum. And from this position, Blair and McPherson's eyes, look at them, they're lighting up, off he goes, bang, 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 three men. But the double tackle from Andrews and Jenkins, enough to halt the captain, Heather. I know, he's had, he's had nine tries in 10 games, maybe just slightly high, just gives Andrews and Jenkins just a chance just to get him. We had another chance to double their try tally to the Ayrshire Bulls. This one, the result of a, a wonderful tapestry of attacking play. Sweeney got the inside ball into big Jamie Shedden. Muirhead swatted aside with the double tackle from Munn. And Tristan Andrews again involved, thwarting the six foot five juggernaut. Yes, yeah, absolutely outstanding. They're getting off the line quickly, Bears here. Super hands there, lovely long pass, looping pass out. Sweeney does well, holds the ball up. And Shedden again. Just, yeah, great double tackle there, last ditch, fantastic, well played. You can look at that as great defence or as butchery from the Ayrshire Bulls. This one, I think, falls into the butchery category. It's McPherson again, hunting for that 10th try of the season. And he just couldn't quite keep hold of this ball. Watch him coming in, supports Johnston. And at this point, you'd have your last penny on him grounding that ball. He spun out of a despairing tackle. And you'll see on the replay here of the ball just, just squirming out of his grasp as he rolled over to ground it. There's the knock on. Yeah. And there's the frustration. And the cry of, what? Maybe from a bit fr frustration from last week just creeping in. I think just resetting a bit from Shedden and McPherson just over eager to get over that try line. They did get their second try a couple of minutes before the halftime whistle sounded. It was almost a carbon copy of the first. Alex Maguire doubling up and extending that Bulls advantage. Yeah, Bulls head coach Pat MacArthur, former hooker himself, really well drilled line out. And again, it's the patience. Johnson's at the back as well, just working well with his forwards. That's a great take. I hadn't realised on first viewing, but Alex Maguire actually made up the majority of the meterage going backwards. <laughs> Off he goes, facing the wrong way, still facing the wrong <laughs> way, and then realises he's made it over the line in reverse and scored his second of the night, his sixth of the Fuzz Rock Super Series Championship. And the halftime score at Millbrae, Ayrshire Bulls 12. But a mere bears nil. Heather, what have you made of the the fair on show tonight? There's been a lot of attacking ambition, some really nice build-up play, just perhaps not quite the, the ruthless touch from either team to finish it. Although you do have to credit the defences. Very much so. I think Bears have had other opportunities. Um, they've gotten the 22. There's um, just a couple of times, just ball not quite going to hand, a couple of knock-ons, a squint line out here and there. But generally, they're in intent, and uh, especially McLean and Muirhead coming into the line uh, from 15. Uh, Muirhead's um, opposite number, Bardelli, though, kicks going to him. That's a difficult one. He's going to counter-attack and set up a, an attack and um, counter-attack. He's always a dangerous player. And uh, we saw at the end there that the Bulls set piece is such a weapon just to relieve pressure as well as apply pressure and it got them out the 22 and kept the, the Bears uh, scoreless at the break. The dogs too welcome at Melbourne. wonder if he's enjoying his evening in the cold. He's certainly got the fur for it. And as always in Ayrshire, regardless of what may or may not be going on elsewhere in the rugby world, on the rugby calendar, the Bulls always attract 
a good following in the main stand here at Melbray as the punters make their way back from the half-time pies and the half-time pints. And the Buttermere Bears, led out by Robeson and by Kerry, two of the most experienced men around, re-enter the Milbury Arena. The Proclaimers, the soundtrack for Colleen Barreto's Bears, the Edinburgh Boys, trailing by 12 points in Alloway. His last 15 game tonight, then he goes back into GB7s, and they'll be wanting to, to get some points on that board. And the Bulls back out for the second half. Heading for their eighth win in the eleventh game of the season. Pat MacArthur's already unhappy with something he's seen. He wants his chasers a bit closer to Brad Roderick Evans. Oh, we're ready, David. Don't worry, you can blow your whistle. Here we go then, the Ayrshire Bulls with a stranglehold in this Fosrock Super Series Championship match. Can the Boromir Bears offer some kind of telling response in the decisive 40 minutes? Penalty's a good start, but Colleen Barreto's hobbled away from that breakdown and he doesn't look to be moving too freely. That's a concern for the Bears. Acrobatically kept in by Fergus Johnston and Roderick Evans too. Corey Tate is stuck on his backside. Somehow the Bills have kept this ball in. The Bears perhaps ruining their gluttony and trying to go a little bit too far with the kick. Bears have brought Craig Miller off the bench at half time. Tight head prop wearing number 18. Chris Hyde as well for Chris Elliott in the back line. Backwards. Again, nobody claiming that bouncing ball. Wesley got mitts on it. Knock on, Mike. Knocked on by Buttermuir. And the Ayrshire Bulls have it. Lewis McNamara, fresh off the bench, took it fourth. Nothing much doing there. Bulls were doing really well there, fielding that yeah, tough kick. But again, the Bears' defence is ferocious. Tristan Andrews there just coming in. Again, we're seeing him again and again. It's a fine introduction, that by Chris Hyde, who stuck big Corey Tate on his rear end on the counter-attack. One of several half-time substitutions made by the Bears. Chris Hyde on for Chris Elliott. Lewis McNamara is on as well. Appears to be for Tim Brown. There he is packing down with 19 on his back. And Craig Miller as well at tight head prop. So both props now on for the Bulls. The Bears yet to utilise their own reinforcements. Tried a bit of stability in the first half. No stability there. OK. Hold the weight. Take the hit. Yeah, Craig Miller, hugely experienced there at the tight head coming on uh, for the Bulls. They'll be looking to do a summer scrum um, as, the, as the end of the first half. Brilliant attacking position this for the Bulls, scrum dead in the middle of the pitch and they'll take the penalty that is the impetus of those fresh front row legs 
And Craig Miller absolutely mangled McFeet Smith. Yeah, hugely experienced. Great scrummaging. And, and Farker there, really, yeah, good around the park and scrum. Picking up as night falls in Alloway. Nine, nine, it's with the bears mark. just now, blowing from left to right as we look at it. Green take from Lewis McNamara, the Northern Irishman. Stop what? Johnston now releases his back line, and Ollie Horn running from out to in, wrapped up by Keddie. Johnston, Fakar. Take it on from Craig Miller, the two props with silky hands. But Corey Tate's with strong hands, winning the penalty for Boromir Bears. Absolutely outstanding there, just really, really strong. Yeah, lovely hands there, Farker bursting through. But Corey Tate too strong, too quick over that ball. Excellent play. The Bears this time do make touch. A couple of times they've missed. This time they don't. And Graham Shield. On matters closely. Tate hits Fisher, Kerry plays scrum half. Barreto to McLean and Robeson. McLean gets another touch and Duncan Munn would have been through there had he taken that ball with him. Bardelli has it instead and off he goes. Wrestled backwards by Andrew McLean. Johnston to Miller. Roderick Evans taking a spot, kicking into the teeth of this Ayrshire Storm. Muirhead, the lower trajectory, awkward for Bardelli, but he takes it cleanly, gets away from Muirhead, slaloming up to halfway. His legs go like a cartoon character, Luca Bardelli, when he gets shifting. Miller, McPherson, not the shout on the inside from Hyde, but Loretto read it well. Roderick Evans, the cross field up and under. Oli Horn, the first man after it. Oli Horn couldn't get there. One of your Bears have it back. Moreto looks left, then right, sees McLean in the pocket. And there's the old school torpedo spiral. Don't see it often enough these days, especially when it's windy. Shedden's repost. Moreto. All his street smarts will be needed by the Bears in this second half. Barretto's kick's allowed to bounce. Ryan Sweeney doing the litter picking as he often does. Was that ball out? Yes, says the referee. Westlake legal to come and ransack Johnston. Oh, no, he wasn't. Sam O'Neill, the nearside assistant referee, spotting that one. Thanks, Sam. You know, Wesley just couldn't help himself, could he, Heather? Yeah, really tough, but yeah. Yeah, just here. Hold on, hold on, you're making up. Both sides just wanting to play, but just, yeah, he was illegal the first time, but not that time. So a change at scrum half for the Ayrshire Bulls. Fergus Johnson won't score his third try in two matches against the Borromeo Bears. He's off after a, okay. another encouraging shift at the base of the scrum. And on will come Reese Cullen, who does get the chance to go up against his little brother Mason. We're in number 14 for the Borromeo Bears. I wonder if they'll come into contact at all. Seven. 
seven. Last one, that was just your time in at the Yeah, right, they both work for their for their dad, so yeah, yeah. Bit of chat on Monday morning. And this might decide who's buying the pints in the clubhouse afterwards. Or who's paying for the chiffy on the way home if semi-pro players get to savour such fine Scottish cuisine. A loose line out and Corey Tates is onto it in a flash. Barreto for the Bears. McLean hammers that long. Horrible ball to deal with, but well fielded by Hyde. So Bardelli with him. Hyde almost bustling straight through the chasing pack. And the Bears again done at the breakdown. Max Loboda. The Polish international. Couldn't resist it. Off his feet. A second nibble at that ball. Yeah, it gets through a lot of work there, but yeah, just not legal there. Okay. Once, you're, once you're cleared out, you've got to come away from the ball. Well, this is the infringement here. You can see Laboda with the, the long yeah, locks going in. The He's off his feet. Yeah. And then he goes back in for a, another grapple at that ball. Pretty flexible, though. Jackson, quick ball off the top for Cullen. And now Blair McPherson doing what Blair McPherson loves to do, namely punching holes in opposition midfields. Oh, Jackson, take a seat. Big old shot from Laboda. Roderick Evans turns Mason Cullen. Shed and breathing down his neck, and the ball beats them all over the touchline. Huge, <laughs> absolutely outstanding. Then straight back on his feet again, trying to make amends there. That was an outstanding tackle. Pressure on the throw from Corey Tate. It's a clean oh. one to Fisher. Bulls choosing not to contest. Kick, took a touch off a of Bulls fingertip, but brilliantly kept in by Glenn Dinning. And the Bulls. Looking to strike again, Sweeney. That ball was out, Cullen, unstructured play, charged down by Andrews, who's been everywhere defensively for the Bears tonight. Glenn Dinning once more, regathers. Reese Cullen, McPherson. A missed pass from Roderick Evans to Horn, who throws an inviting ball out to Rory Jackson. Big shot from Mason Cullen. Yeah, great tackle. Little and large, and... David brings Goliath crashing down to ground. Three, let it go three. Thank you. Cullen, Roderick Evans, Bloodworth on to Alex Maguire. What a pass that is to Shedden. And Bardelli wrapped up by Jenkins. Great read from Jenkins. And the Bulls at sixes and sevens here. Kick over the shoulder from Ollie Horn. And that was a clever option. Important hit though from Joe Jenkins, just as the Bulls were threatening to pierce through. He had that held up in the line with Andrews in the first half in there. He's got real ferocity in defence. Joe Jenkins uh, on the left wing there. A change of piece now for the Bulls and the Bears. As we get another look at a shot on Rory Jackson, who's been dumped on his backside twice. Mason Cullen, take a pow. Absolutely great. Andrew McLean's race is run. George Paul, the former Hartbury University student, is on the fly half position for the Bottom Bears and a change at hooker as well for the Bulls with Rodri Tanner replacing Alex Maguire, who's not going to get his hat trick tonight. Maybe a bone of contention with Pat MacArthur, another former hooker, later on. Stop once. Still no score in the second half. The Bulls have made an awful mess of that Bonamir Bears Mall. They're waiting for the scrum and they're going to get it. 
17 through the medal. Air 17 through the middle, ball unplayable. Two men down. Yeah, the, the Bulls will be aware that they're wanting the bonus point tonight. They want that home semi, uh, semi-final if they can, if can at all. So there'll be eight, you know, two tries on, on at the moment and aiming for, the, for another two tries. So uh, they need their patience there. You saw Blair McPherson talking to his team. So patience here at the 53-minute the mark. But all credit to, to Bears wanting to play and uh, very much um, their defence. Yeah. Both wingers, Joe Jenkins, Mason Cullen. Great stuff. It's a chance to tell you about some of the other things going on around the, the top end of Scottish rugby this weekend. A, a brilliant win, a fifth in a row for Brian Easton's women's team in the WXV2 over the USA this morning. 24 points to 14. They and out pretty comfortable victors in the end. Another really encouraging display from the women's national sides. And they take on Japan yeah. next Friday, 1 p.m. kickoff live across BBC channels. And the United Rugby Championship gets going as well tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Edinburgh in action against the Dragons down at Rodney Parade in Newport. And Glasgow taking on mighty Leinster at Scotston on Sunday afternoon. Yeah. And there are still, I'm told, a few tickets available for that. You've got the opportunity to head down and follow Franco Smith's charge as they look to push towards another playoff appearance in the URC and in Europe. It's encouraging times for the women's team in particular, Heather, a team that will be close to your heart after so many years and so many caps. I think what I was just talking earlier uh, with one of the air supporters, I think what's brilliant about the WXV is it's a completely new, new tournament and uh, it's just an opportunity and certainly Scotland have grabbed the opportunity in Cape Town uh, and Stellenbosch last week and got two bonus point wins and uh, setting themselves up nicely for their, their match against Japan. So, yeah, first time five wins in a row since um, 2001, which is just outstanding and real momentum. Six nations, two wins, uh, and a win against Spain and a friendly, and the win these two wins, so real heartening performances. A couple of subs warming up there, I think. Well, the big boys. Close ranks once more. 26 minutes left. Still 12 now, still those two Alex Maguire tries. The difference between the Bulls of Ayrshire and the Bears of Buttermuir. And it's this Bull scrummage that is gaining the upper hand. And the lactic acid will be coursing through Buttermuir legs right now. Free play for the Bulls, Shedden. This midfield colossus. Cullen breaks right, Bloodworth bundling towards the posts. Cullen lost it at the base. And David Sutherland goes back for the penalty at scrum time. And that, by my reckoning, is a third scrum penalty conceded by the Bears. Yeah, both your sevens were up on the front row. Everybody was up. OK, they were dominant, you were all up. It's such a potent weapon. Especially in a night like this, just yeah. gives them that go forward ball. They've, they don't have to use it when they're going forward. Shedden looking more when comfortable off in that midfield position there. Use it. use it as stationary only. Sorry. As a rule, we don't have many six foot five backs with Jamie Shedden's yeah. size, speed, and skill set. I'm sure Glasgow Warriors in particular yeah. will be having a, a close look at him over the next few months. Absolutely, I think um, such a short window this competition and he's just come on leaps and bounds and uh, real power play and good to see him making those runs. I think he's been injured a wee bit, so yeah, coming back to full fitness. Reminds me a bit of Stafford McDowell, another former air luminary with his physique and his skill set. McPherson this time takes some lifting, but he's got such height and size. Once he's got the ball, good luck reefing it clear. They're looking for another mall try. Rodri Tanner has the ball tucked under an arm. And the Bears are being squeezed inexorably towards their own line. One last shot for the Bulls to use it. They're trundling towards the line. And the try is awarded. Well 
an immense Ayrshire chariot steamrolls the Boromir Bears. Third mall try, and this one belongs to Rodri Tanner. Nice smile there. He also hasn't missed a, a match this championship and showing his consistency and reliability at the back of that mall there. Absolute. Working well with the scrum half Colin, just shepherding them through. That's the second try um, of the championships, but really just strong, 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 just forcing him down, telling him where he is. Where's that line? Well done. One for the forwards. Three for the forwards tonight. And two conversions sweetly struck by Brad Roderick Evans. 19 points to nil. Yeah, their set piece dominance really, really coming to the fore now, both in the scrum and line out. The former fishmonger back in Wales is Rodri Tanner, back in his homeland. Played for Nottingham and Mosley in the English Championship as well. He's got a good pedigree. Certainly well capable of adding his set piece now and his power to this rules pack. The breeze really carrying that kickoff, but Jenkins. Got to it first, knocked it back into Fisher. Barreto, now they move it wide. And Muirhead, with Mason Cullen with him. Muirhead flirting with that touchline, gets the ground just before he's dragged over it. That's lost, 11, 11 is lost, be off your feet. No, 14. Barreto, slow ball. And look at Alessandri. He's just come on in jersey 24, the loose head prop was next to carry. Fisher again, always offering himself in midfield. Robeson, high shots on the Bears' captain. Barreto sees some space. Kieran Westlake goes after the ball, but Reese Cullen's too quick for the big flanker. It's just a penalty for this hit on Fisher. Blair McPherson well, with it. For me, shoulder and then up, you had the penalty advantage, OK? Yeah, referee explaining why it's just a penalty only at this stage. But, yeah, need to be careful with that. <laughs> Big Blair McPherson, an ever-present once more for the Usher Bulls. And he's such a massive presence for them. I think tonight, though, I think Tristan Andrews has shown the, the sort of contrasting styles of number eight. It's a really interesting matchup. Much younger, Kristen Andrews, only 21. He's a great carry. He's not quite got the same size as Blair McPherson, but he's got more pace. Perhaps able to, to get around the park in the closing stages of the game a little bit more freely than the air captain, carrying a, a few kilos less. There is the man in question, Tristan Andrews. Two try-saving interventions, one on McPherson, another on Jamie Shedden. And Graham Shea will be pleased to see his number eight. Strapped up and ready to go again. Closest they've come to a try. Can they execute this line out? They win the ball. Andrews took it. Arthur Allen just off the bench. Waiting for his moment, but his moment won't come here. The Bulls squeeze them into the ground. Jenkins. Goes again on his own, Bulls offside, penalty advantage, Bears. Barreto, Andrews. Penalty advantage. Alessandri. Westlake feeds it out. Max Laboda, the pole, charging for the line. An hour play without the bottom of your Bears scoring. Can they make it happen here? Jenkins off his wing, Muirhead in for the corner, and Muirhead in for the try. It's an eighth of the campaign for the diminutive fullback, and he's straight off the deck and in to mix it with the big boys. Brilliant try there by Barmir Bears, really, really well executed. Excellent line out. Well taken line out and good shepherding. Laboda there, really good leg drive, taking a lot of Ayrshire Bulls to stop him. 
and Beretta knowing when to pull the trigger. Robson, a lovely wraparound pass there. And Muirhead just keeping his width superbly well. Impressive tonight. He's been lively once more. Uh, so too was some of the language you may have picked up on David Sutherland's referees, Mike, so we do apologise if that came over your sets at home. First kick of the night for Paul. Kicking with the wind. Sends it on its way. And the flags are raised. Fabulous kick from George Paul. Ershabul's 19, Butamir Bear 7. They're on the board. And the game is very much on. Lovely passing, really, really good. Brad Roderick Evans not happy with the particular match ball. And another one's going to have to be sourced from somewhere. There we go. Roderick Evans, the deeper kick. Barreto straight onto it. A slicey return, but Mason Cullen is showing some interest here. Mason Cullen gets to it, and he suddenly is stepping and slaloming and piercing the Bulls' defensive line. Can't do it all on his own. Can find Barreto in supports. The Bears heading towards the corner. Big shot coming in on Colleen Barreto. This is vintage Boromir Bears rugby. The free-flowing, attacking rugby that the Bears want to play. Loboda into the 22. And then the Bulls pilfer it back. And the attacking chance is lost. And some of the Bears around us thump the stand in frustration. Alessandri doing the squeeze on Ryan Sweeney. That felt like a big chance for Butterby Bears to move within touching distance of the Bulls. Cullen over the shoulder, taken by Paul. Running at Shedden, helped out by Joe Jenkins, but McNamara has his number. Hands on the floor from the Bulls, and Barreto is off and running, bringing that seven spark, finding Kieran Westlake, who's leaving Bulls trailing in his wake. Barreto. Paul, plenty of green jerseys off to the right. One of them is Arthur Ashe. Bulls flailing, Bears' best spell of the game. Barreto keeps them honest around the fringes. No, release, release. Ball is available. Tempo really has been kicked up a couple of notches. Big old charge again. And another Bears penalty. That's a couple in a row now. And there's going to be a talking to for Blair McPherson. Time's off. Yeah. That's three of the same type of penalty in a row. I can't reward your jackler when your tackler's preventing the clear out. So there's 10 there, another one there, and this player here. Clear the tackle area. Yeah, clear instruction there from the referee. Clear that tackle area, but superb tempo play there by Barmuir Bears. Clean Barreto just leading that charge, just awareness and into the 22. Bears were frustrated when they we didn't get any any feedback there from the, the Cullen break, but they got another opportunity. And here it is. Just awareness. Westlake's quite often been in good support lines this evening. Good recycling. Paul's passing, real sharpness to it. All good. Water off, please. Colleen Barreto off to join Time the GB7 on. set up next week. Tackle roll, please. Doing a stint in the 15s game for now. And the Bears go to the corner. Five, please, here. Almost heading one of our TV trucks. 
Line's good, thank you. And George Paul rallying the troops. Line out seven metres from the Bulls line. 15 minutes to play. Fisher with the fingertip take. 19, off the leg, off the leg. And Lewis out, McNamara out. commanded out of that mall. Now Boromir Bears. Stop once for sideways. Try to now inch their way forth. Forwards can't get the job done. Barreto unleashes the backs and Munn, Paul with him. Oh, Barreto's gone alone! And Barreto sneaks, snipes, scores! And the Bears are within touching distance now. Yeah, just spots that absolutely sevens play. He's just got such an eye for the gap, Barreto. So quick. You can't take your eyes off him. Just so there agile. Bulls did. Two tries in five minutes. have changed the complexion of this game. George Paul slams it into the Ayrshire trees. It's a five-point game all of a sudden. 14 minutes left. It was just a great, it was a good carry, but it was just Barreto's awareness back on the blind side, the no guard there from the defence and just took his opportunity. And now it's the Bulls who must find a response. The Bears, what a clean exit from their own 22. Joe Jenkins took it up. Barreto to Loboda, who is absolutely levelled. Yeah, ball is there. Three Bears going to clean out. A couple of Bulls with a big yeah, double shot. No, clearly not. Barreto. And that's a fine clearing kick up to halfway. And he's pulling out all the skills tonight, Kaleem Barreto, on what could be his last game of 15s for some time. Yeah, he's got the fluency there, the rhythm. Paul certainly added some um, replacement time, has certainly added uh, to, to the attacking line. Air. 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 Sam, get him to step off. They're on the line. Help. Tell your hooker, tell your hooker to step off. Ball is inside, inside. Bit of choreography required at the lineouts. And the throw is a bit loose. Sweeney makes hay. Cullen, Tanner, oh, big collision with Scott McGinley, who's not long off the bench. McNamara with the next carry. Reese Cullen, Roderick Evans, up it goes, wide it goes, Shedden taps it back in field, and it's kicked ahead, and suddenly the Bears are scrambling and the Bulls chasing back, but Hyde is alert. And it's well touched down by Ewan Muirhead. Goal line drop out, Muir. But not forward. He's very safe, very safe under um, chasing back, very comfortable doing that. Good hand eye coordination. Deeply starts. Jamie Shen with a 30 yard run up. Oh, you can hear the slap of bone on bone as the biggest back on the pitch is dumped on his rear end. Barreto covering cleverly. And again, relieving that pressure and exiting cleanly. What a hit this was on Jamie Shedden. Yeah. It's really changed. The defence was good in the first half, but look at this, double tackle. Driving them back, absolutely excellent. Straight back on the feet as well. He did choose to run into two props. Jamie Shetty's big, but he's not that big. Taken by Bloodworth. The Bulls looking to reassert some dominance. 
and they've got the penalty advantage. Bears bringing that Malls down. McPherson pirouetting and then pulverizing. Cullen, McNamara pulls it back for Roderick Evans. And now Hyde floats the ball out to Bardelli, juggles but he clings on, this is dangerous, Bardelli inside to Horn, out the back door to Hyde who's got a second touch of this phase, Colin, McNamara spins out of one tackle, crucial moments these. The Bulls hunting the bonus point try, the Bears defending furiously. They're screaming for the penalty. Clearly off your feet. And Cullen goes quickly, keeping that tempo high. Cullen marched backwards, Joe Jenkins, big shoulder. No, it's not. The Bulls keep it tight. The Bears furious, they didn't get the penalty there. Still they come. Bears want them all here. They want to keep that ball off the ground. McPherson spinning away, find support from Cullen. Can't squeeze in towards the corner flag. Sweeney plays scrum half. McPherson again with the carry. McPherson spins towards the line. And this time he scores. Twice, Captain Colossus has been thwarted, but not a third time. Not with the bonus point try beckoning, and might that be the winning score? Yeah, he's got that look about them. Just when it matters, look at that run. Good offload there to Cullen. Cullen does well to keep it alive and recycle. And again, McPherson on his feet, offering himself, as he does time and time again. You mentioned he might not make 80 minutes. He plays 80 minutes most weeks, if not all, every week. Fantastic finish to get the bonus point for, for the Bulls. Just there from another angle, he has a lot to do. Turns out the tackle from three uh, Bears players. Well played. And at last he gets his 10th try of the season. Thwarted twice. Once a knock on, once a brilliant piece of defence from Andrews and Jenkins. Not to be denied this time. And daylight between these teams showing again. Roderick Evans to make it a 12 point match. Oh, he's judged the win superbly. Bent that one in expertly. The coaches are driving in the box. And here's your Bulls. Can smell victory now. Yeah, he was looking good practice and it's paying off, paying off right when it matters. Substitution complete, Craig. Yeah, when you're ready. Callum McGregor is on at the front row for Bottomier Bears. Callum McFeet Smith has made his way to the bench. Carried back. He's carried back. And Blair McPherson underneath that kickoff. Seven minutes to play. Bottomier Bears need two scores now. And that one is out on the full. And they can occupy some prime Ayrshire real estate now. Huge opportunity for the Bears, absolutely huge. And Colleen Barreto's race is run. Ruri Swan, another talented scrum half, wearing number 21. He's on to replace him. you're good there. Yeah, thank you, sir. Arthur Ash. Advantage, jumping across. Got a penalty advantage, Boromir Bears. As they creak into the 22, Swan to Jenkins. Can't pierce between two defenders. Swan, Jack Fisher, still working hard. Still asking defensive questions. There. No momentum coming. Jump. 
Gaffers jumped across, landed in their ball on the 15. There you go. 19. Up and down, please. If you're going to go across, you have to at least get back out. Can't go straight in. 25. All right. You in? Into that corner for the third time. Go the Boroughmuir Bears. Go this green and blue pack. Fisher rises highest. And look at the drive coming on. The accelerator put to the floor. Is there a grounding? Oh, yes. The Bears hit back. The try awarded to Scott McGinley, who's not long come off the bench. And the Bears are not dead and buried yet. Arthur Allen doing really well and his throws there and well taken again. And immediately they're just driving, driving, driving and they know they've got it down. Well done, Scott McGinley in amongst that. He's such a key man for the Buttermere Bears. He took on the captaincy for portions of the season when Craig Kerry was injured. He's been a bear since the inception of the Foss Rock Super Series. Seven points the gap. The moment the Bears need a converted try to draw this kick. would mean a try alone would do it. You couldn't kick it any straighter. George Paul laughing in the face of Storm Babets. It's a five point match, four minutes left. Fantastic conversion. Everything to play for. Three minutes remaining. Five points separate the Bulls and the Bears. Who wants this match ball? Reese Cullen gets it. Callum McGregor couldn't rip it back. And vitally, it's Bulls possession. Sweeney still making meters deep into this match. Cullen, Bloodworth. He's Cullen. Pull back from Hyde. The Bulls want possession. They've got a penalty. And how important might that be? 18, if you put yourself in there, you've got to get yourself out. The Bulls can kill the game with a try here. 90 seconds left. McPherson takes it. And the Bulls Mall takes charge. Crabbing their way in field. Milbray rises to a crescendo. Bears have done well to stop them all in its tracks. Now they look to break off and go for the line. Held up. What a play from the Bears. Rodri Tanner thwarted at the last. And Kieran Westlake putting his body literally on the line. He's been outstanding both in attack and defence. OK. Maybe it players on and you need to pick it behind the line, all right? Heather nail biting finale. It is time though to name your first rock player of the match as we enter this vital last minute. Yeah, excellent second half, but 
primarily for the first his first half performances. Tristan Andrews, number eight for Birmingham Bears, um, try saving tackles, and his work rate is just outstanding. A real one for the future and one to watch. He's had a super game, but at the moment he's going to finish on the losing side. The Bears need possession, they haven't got it. 14 seconds left. The Bulls need perhaps one more phase before they can hoof it off the pitch. Time is up. Kick it out is the cry from the Bulls. Tackle! The Bears can't steal it back. Reese Cullen into the pocket it goes. Off the pitch it goes from Townsend. And a nail biter at Millbrae. Ends with the Bulls victorious. Boy, they had to work for it against the determined and ferocious Boromir Bears team. And although he finished on the losing side, Tristan Andrews is our Fuzz Rock player of the match tonight. Richly deserved award it is too. They fought back from 12-0 down to the Bears. They got to within a score twice for the crucial try. At the end, belonged to Blair McPherson. Another bonus point win for the Ayrshire Bulls. And they take another mighty step towards a home semi-final in the Foz Rock Super Series Championship. Full-time in Alloway at Millbrae. Ayrshire Bulls 26, Buttermere Bears 21. Well, what a second half that was. And we can take a look back at the, the best of the action. There were only 12 points scored in the first half. There were a heck of a lot more in the second 40. The first of them bagged by Rodri Tanner, 16 minutes in. Yeah, Alex Maguire scoring two tries in the first half, but Tanner there just showing equally capable at the back of the, the mall there and just getting that third try in there and just, yeah, great composure there from Cullen at the scrum half at the back there. The Bears were 19-0 down at this stage. They needed a lifeline and it arrived in the form of Ewan Muirhead, as it often has this season. Top try scorer for Buttermuir. This is eighth of the campaign. Yeah, it was off a good line out and a good carry, but Loboda, but lovely wraparound play there in the centre and Muirhead just keeping his width. Munn there, nice hands. Good ruck play. And Barreto, oh! GB7s. You do credit for Scotland play for GB7. Uh, um, Kaleem, absolutely excellent play there. You give him a gap and he will gleefully saunter through it. Two tries in five minutes, 66 on the clock at that point, and it was a five point game. The Bulls needed a response and it arrived typically from the forwards, from the close quarter bludgeoning, and from big Blair McPherson, the captain, hitting double figures for the season, his 10th of the campaign. And that's one of the most important of the lot. His strength there, but his will to win as well. Is that will absolutely outstanding? Maurice yeah, Cullen snipe blind, but the ball its like a magnet, finding the warm embrace of Blair McPherson. Three tacklers on him, none of them can shackle him. And with nine minutes to play, that proved to be the decisive score. The Bears not done there, though, and their pack served up a dose of the Bulls' own medicine with four minutes left. The try awarded to Scott McGinley. David Sutherland spotting the grounding. Yeah, it was a well-executed line-out. He just needed that tidied up and they did it there. Subs adding impetus there and yeah, great finish, great finish. A super touchline conversion, well not quite touchline, but a super conversion in the win from George Paul. 26 points to 21, the Bears just couldn't get their hands on the ball after the restart and the Bulls able to manage the last couple of minutes of the match and reclaim top spots in the Fuzzrock Super Series midway through round 12. They go on to 42 points, two clear of Heriots, good in action tomorrow. And Watsonians as well, looking for a place in the top two. That looks a, a big ask now. Buttermere Bear still second bottom on 12. So confirmation of tonight's final score, Ayrshire Bulls 26, Buttermere Bears 21. Watsonians hosting Sterling Wolves at Myerside tomorrow. That's a big old game, and that should be a cracker between two teams bang in form. And in a change of kickoff time on Sunday, the Sunday fixture, Heriot's Rugby against the Fosrock Future 15. 
Heriot's looking for maximum points to move back into top spots. Next Friday, we will be live in the shadow of the Wallace Monument in Stirling at Bridgehaw as Marcus Holden's Wolves take on Alan Tate's Southern Knights live on Scottish Rugby Channels and BBC Alibur. So the Bulls receiving those final messages from Pat MacArthur and Blair McPherson still on the pitch. The Bears desolate, disappointed, frustrated. They weren't able to pluck that from the fire. They can take much from this performance. But it is the Bulls night once more. It is an eighth win in 11 matches, and it's a bonus point victory that takes them back to the summit of the Fosrock Super Series Championship. My thanks to Heather Lockhart and to all of our production team tonight. My thanks for you for watching another engrossing Friday night fixture under the Millbury floodlights. We'll see you at Bridgehawk in seven days' time.